Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and as the title of the video suggests today's topic is to write a C++ program to implement prefix to infix expression conversion using a stack data structure yes this is the practical aspect of prefix to infix using stack and if you don't know how the working goes if you don't know what is the pseudo code and the rules we've already discussed that thoroughly in the previous tutorial so i would highly recommend you watch that but if you already know how that works if you've seen that video then you're good to go make sure you watch this video till the end because this is where we will write a c++ program from scratch and implement this pseudo code that we discussed in the previous tutorial if you're new to my channel my name is tanmay sakpal and i do a lot of computer science and information technology video tutorials like computer programming development technology talks and a lot more on this channel so if that's something you're interested into then definitely subscribe and turn on the notifications to get the latest updates and never miss out on such important topics okay so as you can see on the screen i have already opened up my dc++ id and written a little bit of code you guys can do the same and it is not necessary that you use c++ only you can use any other general purpose programming language the pseudo code obviously is going to be the same the rules are going to be the same and on the right hand side you can see the pseudo code as well but we are going to use c++ so quickly a uh, overview about this code and i highly recommend that you type it out yourself at least for the first time so in the int main we are creating two string variables or two string objects infix and prefix we are saying enter a prefix expression we are taking the prefix expression from the user then we are printing out that prefix expression we say prefix equals to the same string that we took from the user after this we create a prefix to infix user defined function which we are going to create and that's that's the one that is going to have the entire pseudo code we pass the prefix string and this function will return a infix string which we will store in the infix string variable and that is what we are going to print over here saying infix expression so this is the code that goes inside the int main i have already typed it out because we don't want to waste time on the top over here is where we create this prefix to infix function we will say string prefix to infix it's going to take a string variable we will write string prefix okay so it is going to take a string argument which is going to be the prefix expression and then now inside this is where we will have to follow the pseudo code statements which you can see on the right hand side so let's get started with the implementation so if you see in the pseudo code the very first instruction or the very first step is to create a stack variable a stack object now we can write our own stack class and create our own stack object but we are going to use the standard template library stack which is provided in the stl library and for that we have to use this hash include stack instruction which will include that stack so this stack is nothing but a standard template library element which is already provided to us so that we can directly use it okay so the first line will be like this we will say stack in the angular brackets it is going to be a string and then the stack name which is s so this is the object name this stack s is going to have or store string elements so remember this is a c++ style string and i've already discussed the difference between c style string and c++ style string and the reason why we have angular brackets is because this is a template okay we've also talked about what is templates in a separate tutorial do watch that if you don't know what is templates but this is how the syntax goes for creating this predefined stack which is provided in the stl okay moving on the step number 2 is obviously a for loop and in this case the loop is going to go in the reverse order that is starting from the end of the prefix string to the start of the prefix string so we will say for int i is equal to prefix dot length minus 1 okay so this prefix string is what we are passing in as the argument over here right so we will take this and we will calculate its length by using dot length function now since this is a c++ style string it already has some inbuilt functions it's basically an object which will have its own methods so this length method will give us the length and we will say minus 1 because obviously the index is will start from 0 to the length minus 1 right so that's why length minus 1 we will say i greater than equal to 0 because we will start from the end till 0 so i has to be greater than or equal to 0 once it goes below 0 we will stop the for loop hence i minus minus okay so this is the for loop that's step number 2 now inside this for loop we have two conditions that is if and else if 
and these two conditions are for either operands or operators so remember in a prefix string in a prefix expression we will either have operands which is a b c or any constant or a sub expression so that is operands or we can have operators operators are plus minus divided by raised to and multiplication these are the five operators that we are considering so only these two can be there in our prefix expression right we don't have opening and closing brackets so that's why we have if and else if that is two conditions one for operands and one for operators so if you see 2.1 we say if prefix of i that is the current symbol that we are scanning in the prefix string if it is a operand we simply push it onto the stack so 2.1 and 2.1.1 is for that so we say if is operand prefix of i and if it is a operand what we do we create a string op we take this prefix of i character we make one copy of it and store it in this string op that is operand and push it onto the stack now let me explain to you what is happening over here from from the very first line we first call this user defined function is operand now we still have to create it but as the name suggests is operand will check whether the current symbol that we are scanning is a operand or not how do we do that programmatically let me just show you that function okay so this is that function that checks whether the character is a operand or not how do you check that we pass that character in this is operand function and in the if else we check if this character is greater than or equal to a, a and is less than or equal to z or z that is in small caps or is this character greater than or equal to capital caps and is this character c less than or equal to capital z or z so remember the ascii values of these characters a to z in small caps and a to z in large caps are consecutive to each other that is one besides each other so that's why we can give this kind of range in the programmatic terms and this would pretty much apply to any other programming language also because ascii values of these characters don't change in any other programming language also so the same condition will pretty much apply in any other general purpose programming language and if this is the case if if it is either between a to z in small caps or a to z in large caps in that case it is a operand right so operand is a variable it is a constant or it can be a sub expression right that's why it is a operand so in that case we will say return true but otherwise we will say return false and hence the return type is bool bool is for boolean boolean has true or false only two types right so this is what we are calling over here if is operand and then we are passing prefix of i so in the for loop we are iterating through this prefix string right and to address every character in the prefix string we can use this syntax prefix and in square brackets the index position i so if it is operand then we go in this if block so we are inside 2.1 now and we want to push this prefix of i that is this character into the stack now you'll see the syntax is little strange so let me explain now when we are seeing prefix of i we are taking that character so the data type is char right but we are creating a string object so string is not equal to char char is a primitive data type string is not a primitive data type in c++ so we have to make that conversion right so this is why we are taking or we are creating string op op is a object and this is basically calling a constructor okay when we say class name and the object and then opening and closing round brackets and inside that when we pass arguments it is a constructor and it is basically a parameterized constructor so this constructor what it does is it takes this character prefix of i this one denotes how many number of copies do you want of this character so one is basically one copy if i write two then whatever is there in prefix of i will be copied two times and then it will be stored in this op string as string data type you can see this is the string data type or you can say class so this is where the conversion is happening from a simple char data type to a string class type or data type okay we could have simply said string op is equal to prefix of i but if you do that you will get an error and it will say that the data type is not matching on the right hand side we have a simple character on the left hand side we have a string which is a class type so for that we have to do or we have to use this syntax only now of course this will change in different programming languages the syntax will change but ultimately now once we have this character as string in this op operand so op is for operand we will take this and we will push it onto the stack we will say s dot push so s is this stack which will store string elements right 
so that's why it can easily push this op because op is also of string type okay so this is 2.1 now in the else if part obviously if it is not a operand it will obviously be a operator so we can directly say else we don't have to say else if and check for the operators because if the current symbol that is prefix of i is not a operand it will obviously be a operator we have only two use cases so directly you can use else you don't have to use else if just like we have in the pseudo code so in the else part we have six instructions so let's go line by line we will first create op1 and we will say s dot top so basically what we are doing is we are taking the top of the stack that is the operand which is there on the top of the stack we will store it in op1 so we will say string op1 is equal to s dot top then we will say s dot pop so remove that top of the stack element or operand then again we will create one more string op2 again s dot top so operand number 2 comes in op2 and we will again pop it off the fifth statement is to create a expression exp which is going to be a infix expression so we have opening and closing brackets between that we have op1 plus prefix of i which is the operator plus op2 so that would be the infix expression and that is supposed to be pushed back onto the stack in step number 2.2.6 right so for that programmatically this is how it would look like and what we can do is we can combine point number 2.2.5 and 2.2.6 so without creating that extra string exp we can directly say s dot push and we can create that string over here itself in the push function or push method we will say opening bracket we will say op1 we will say prefix of i which is the operator in between and op2 so this is that infix sub expression which is going to be pushed onto the stack okay so step number 2.2.5 and 2.2.6 can be combined programmatically in this line and that is pretty much about it for the for loop but once you come outside the for loop we will obviously have to return the top of the stack because you can see our prefix to infix function user defined function takes the prefix string but it will return some string also and it will return a infix string so we will say return s dot top and after this entire for loop completes the top of the stack will have the complete infix expression now if you are wondering how that happens please do watch the previous video that's where we have taken an example we have dry run this full entire pseudo code onto that example and we achieved our infix expression so that will make the entire process very clear this is just us converting the pseudo code into a programming code but yeah after you say return as dot top that is pretty much end of this string prefix to infix user defined function and now we can directly save this and let's see if this works so in the main function we are calling this prefix to infix function which we just created right now and let's see if this works go to execute compile and run okay so things seem to be working fine the example that we'll take is the one that we dry run in the previous tutorial also so that it becomes very clear that in the implementation side also we are doing everything right so this is that prefix expression in the previous tutorial that we dry run with the pseudo code let's see programmatically if this prefix expression is converted to its appropriate infix format i'm going to hit enter and there you go this is the prefix expression and the corresponding infix expression is exactly in proper format if you want you can cross verify this by taking this prefix expression and converting it to its infix format manually we have already discussed how that process goes or you can cross verify it by previous tutorial also but this result is exactly right in fact just to verify it let's take a simple example let's say plus star a b c so for this prefix expression just by looking at it we can say that a star b happens first and then we will say a star b in brackets and plus c right when we convert it to its appropriate infix format so when i hit enter there you go you can see the result is exactly same a star b happens first so star comes in between in the infix format and then the plus comes over here and the brackets are added to you know denote which sub expression is evaluated first because in infix expression we require operator precedence and associativity rules okay so this was the entire prefix to infix practical side where we wrote a c++ program we implemented the pseudo code you can as i mentioned obviously use any other general purpose programming language the pseudo code is going to be the same the syntax obviously is going to change 
I'm going to be sharing this entire code along with the theory, along with the rules, along with the pseudo code with, with you guys on our official website. So you can find that in the link below. Do not just copy it. I would highly recommend that at least you type it once with your own hands, like take the pseudo code and convert it into appropriate code for the best practice. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how this video was. Do share it with your friends and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.